Allison deposits $500 into a new savings account that earns 5% interest compounded annually. If Allison makes no additional deposits or withdrawals, how many years will it take for the amount in the account to double? This question, we need to know how to find the compound interest. We need to know the compound interest formula. So we're going to set this up. The compound interest, we're going to set this equal to A, which we'll call the value of money in the account after a certain period of time has elapsed and after you've earned a certain amount of interest. We will call P0, you can have different symbols, we'll call P0 uh, the principal, the amount of money invested in first. In this case, it's going to be $500. That's the starting amount of money in the account. Then we're going to multiply this by 1 plus R. Now, typically it's 1 plus R over N for the general compounded interest formula, but since we're compounding annually, what happens is the 1 plus R over N, N is the number of compounding periods per year, and since it's 1, because it's just compounded annually, this just reduces down to 1 plus R. Uh, if we're dealing with you know, something semi-annually or monthly, we'd have to deal with this uh, 1 plus R over N. But we can just leave this as 1, part, 1 plus R, where R is the percent in as a decimal, and then we raise it to the T. And again, in the compounded interest formula, it would be to the NT, where N is again the number of compounding periods. But since we've got one compounding period, we just leave it as T. So this is the simple or the compound interest formula when you are compounding annually. So let's put in our numbers. We want this to double, so we're gonna set this equal to 1,000 because our starting point's 500. One plus R, well, the percent is five, so we're gonna make this 1.05, and then to the T. And now we just have to solve for T. So 2 equals 1.05 to the t. You could, in theory, plug in some numbers here. You know, plug in 19 for t, 20 for t, see what happens. Or we can solve this by LNing both sides. When we do that, this t comes down to the front. So we get ln of 2 equals t ln of 1.05. So t equals ln of 2 ln of 1.05. These are just numbers. We can find these in the calculator. So ln of 2 divided by ln of 1.05 gets us 14.2 years. Now be very careful here. Typically, we would be rounding down on a question like on a, on a question where we got 14.2. If we were looking for a whole number, we would round down because it's 14.2, 2 is less than 5. So by the typical rounding rules, you'd round down. However, in this question where we're dealing with a real life situation, we want to know like, what is how many years it's going to take for this to double. It's going to take 14.2 years for it to double, which means if we put 14, we're not quite going to double yet. In fact, we can prove that, right? It's going to be 500 times 1.05 to the 14. We're not going to be quite there yet. We're going to be at 989. So we actually, it's not rounding up, but we have to pick the year higher than 14.2 because after 15 years, we'll be certainly much more than doubled. We'll be not much more than doubled, but what do we, let's see what we'll be at. We'll be at 500 times 1.05 to the 15. So we'll be at $1,039. That's more than doubled. But the point is that is the minimum point in terms of years where we'll be doubled. At 14, we're not quite there yet. So we have to put 15, even though uh, it's kind of rounding up when you shouldn't. But it makes sense in this case when you have a real life scenario.